All right, Jeff Cow here. Welcome to Sci-Fi Express Lane. Um, writer, creator, all that good stuff. Sci-fi opinionated person. Um, today, I'm going to I want to talk about the importance of perspective, and I want to use the movie Civil War as um, my the basis of my uh, opinion. Right? Um, I saw it. And I was really looking forward to it. And it kind of, I'll, I'll say I was 80%, 80, 90% satisfied. You know, um, satisfaction rate sometimes goes over 10. But this one was like an 8 or 9 out of 10. Sometimes like with Kong and versus uh, Godzilla, it goes over um, a 10. And that's like I'm blown away. I'm extremely satisfied. But this one, I was a little under... Whelmed, but I still um, uh, like what I saw. So it gave me feelings of a lot of types of movies. Um, I thought it was going to be like Red Dawn with Patrick Swayze and them fighting in the Midwest with some invaders. Even though I knew it wasn't going to be China or Russia or Cuba. I still felt that it would give me that type of caught the American citizens off guard. Here are going to be some uh, uprising of, of sides. And um, through the war experiences of those people caught in the midst. And for me, it didn't really do that. What it did was give us the um, opinion or the view of... Um, what do you call it? Of uh, the reporters caught in the situation, caught in the scenario. And I felt that while that wasn't exactly what I wanted, you know, I wanted it from the people fighting back and killing the insurgents and, you know, enemies, good guy. It did follow liberal media, right? And that was fine. And you rode with. Uh, people that I politically agreed with, right? Not people that hate, you know, like the MAGA majority, you know, hate immigrants and stuff like that. So I was cool with it from that perspective, but that was it. It, it, it. From there, it just went straight to, um, uh, what do you call it? Went straight to uh, um, the the perspective of a um, reporter, and I don't have a problem with that. It was really different. Um, it did show a lot of the origins of the, um, um, no, actually it showed, it, re it referred to it. It didn't show origins of the conflicting parties. It just referred to the things they did. And I think that was the downside of it because people, you know, particularly, uh, my wife and even others wanted more of, um, uh, the conflict between the parties to be revealed, you know, and it really didn't give us that. So um, it reminded me in a way of um, the DMZ with um, uh, Rosario Dawson. It gave me that feeling. And um, I was like, wow, you know, um, I liked World War Z, but I've always wanted pre-war um, not World War Z DMZ um, the DMZ with Rosario Dawson I always wanted the pre-DMZ you know how did they get to the point where they were that was what I wanted you know what I'm saying and um, that wasn't really shown um, it gave it, it alluded to more of it than the DMZ did but it didn't give us enough, you know. Um, I think it, Red Dawn didn't give us really any, you know what I'm saying. So it was like Red Dawn in that sense, you know. Uh, but uh, I liked what it gave us, you know. Um, what's the other thing? Uh, it was a anti-war movie, okay. It made um, a light of 
the reasons for war and just really hated on war. And by that, it was um, bipartisan, right? Because it didn't give us the reasons for the war, so it didn't really take a side. But at the same time, it hated on war and the civil war that was going on. And it kind of didn't say who was right or who was wrong, but it pretty much just said, damn, it's isn't this messed up? You know, um, both sides. Um, I didn't really like the reporters, right? Um, I didn't really like the reporters. There was the black guy, I liked him, but the other reporters, I didn't really like them so much. Um, I think, um, you know, sometimes when there's movies where the characters learn their lesson, you as a fan want to see them after the movie, like the mother in Taken. Yeah, she needs to do a post-movie, you know, commentary. You know what I'm saying? Because she certainly learned her lesson in that movie. And I think the same thing with the people that survived um, this movie, um, uh, 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 Civil War. But it wasn't um, a, what do you call it, a anti-war movie, much like, um, I liken it to The Hurt Locker, had a feel like... Um, uh, um, what do you call it? What's the other movie? Um, Full Metal Jacket, Hamburger Hell. I'll, I don't know if I say Jarhead, but let's throw Jarhead in there. Um, what else? It had, um, it definitely felt like if it was done like Don't Look Up, it might have been better. But like Don't Look Up was hyper uh, reality. And the people was really stupid and don't look up. Even though they're very similar to how we are now, um, that type of storyline, it wasn't told like that. And I'm fine with it. I ain't got no problem with it. Um, another movie that I can compare it to, I think, okay, so let me go back to Don't Look Up. So with Don't Look Up, I think it would have clowned the clowns. And I think... That's the problem with where we're at right now. Yes, MAGA has a lot of people that are not uh, articulate, well-read, um, uh, intellectual, right? But we can't clown them because as a intellectual Michael Eric Dyson, Barack Obama community, we take, it, we take for granted these people. They got to vote. And I think what made Malcolm X so powerful is that he didn't speak high level like Michael Eric Dyson. He spoke a practical language. He didn't flash his vocabulary, which I think he had. He talked in a way that it was very clear by any means necessary. You know what that means. You know what I'm saying? He didn't talk like a politician. And I think um, the people who Donald Trump, that the people who support Donald Trump, they um, um, are very simple, um, understanding people. They, you start talking complexities, they don't understand it. The simple stuff, many of them probably don't give a much give much uh, uh, attention to politics in general. So um, that is that's one thing. You know what I'm saying? They probably don't even care. Um, so it got to be real simple for them. And by clowning the right or the dumb Trump supporters, right? Because some of them are racist and they're fully intellectual. You know what I'm saying? It's not all dumb people over there. We miss the impact on them that we could have. And then the gray area of people, you know, where the black flat earthers and, and stuff come in, we miss those people. So I think if Civil War had been lighthearted like... Um, um, don't look up, or even um, what's that movie that just came out? Not Origin, uh, American Fiction. It would have not been as effective as it is now. Another movie that um, I think it took from was uh, one of my favorite stories, and one of my favorite black movies was The Spook Who Sat by the Door, 
and um, Civil War did not deal with the race element of the um, war, you know, if you ask people, yes, we feel and believe that MAGA supporters are racist so much that we actually think Donald Trump is racist, right? Um, but maybe, you know, there's people that don't. And um, because of that, maybe they um, decided to leave, the producers and the writers decided to leave out the racial element so much that um, they didn't want to even deal with it. Now, the brown immigrant patriotism element was in there, but um, let's not ignore it. Hitler was racist. The um, 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 He didn't just hate Jews. If you just think that you're missing half of it, he was groomed by King Leopold in, in Africa, killing millions of people, Africans, black people. He came up with the Aryan race, but yet the narrative is he hated Jews, Jewish people. But if you miss that, you're you're losing. They're doing the same thing with this MAGA stuff. Yeah, it's about the border. No doubt it's about the border. But it wasn't about immigrants when white people were immigrating from Europe. Now that you're getting black and brown people coming from the southern border, South and Central America, it's a problem. It ain't a problem because they speak Spanish. It ain't a problem because they are um, um, are from another country. No, it's the fact that they're people of color. And Spanish people better get aware of it. So for me, I was fine with them leaving the black people out and including the uh, southern border uh, Latino Hispanic people because... They got to stop thinking that these MAGA people, especially these Cuban immigrants, have to stop thinking like proud boys that they're um, out for their best interest. They not work. They don't want the country to be Spanish speaking either. They don't like you. They don't want plantains. They don't want enchiladas. They don't want quesadillas unless they making them in their Chipotle. They don't want them. So let's get it clear. So that's the world that we live in. What I liked about the spook who sat by the door was it was everything that a uh, civil war wasn't it was a black resistance to racism in america that brought america to its feet and my you know my wish is one day that somebody will do a sequel to it or a more expansive experience that probably leads into a sequel because we didn't really see the 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 um, countrywide battle. Um, and that would have been beautiful to see. We saw how they dealt with it in Chicago, but there was war in, going on in Philadelphia, New York, LA, and Atlanta, probably even Miami, you know, and that would have been beautiful to see. Um, in, in Civil War, they went on a road trip, so you saw the fight in other parts of the country. No doubt. No doubt. You did see that. Um, so it wasn't as expansive as World War Z, where you got a feeling that it was going on all over the world. The destruction of America is a global thing. If America goes down, they may not be fighting all over the world, but just as America has its hands in other uh, countries' battles, believe me, if the Republicans or whatever fractions break off in America in a serious way, Russia, China, uh, Iraq, Iran, Arab nations, they're going to be involved in it some way. They're going to send some troops over here either to support the president or to support the uprising and the resistance. They're not going to mind their business. And the Civil War kind of left that out. Um, but that's about it. You know, so I see a whole lot of different things in it. I thought the movie was really good. I gave it a uh, eight or nine out of 10, eight, let's say 8.5. Um, it, it was just a perspective and that perspective changed everything. It was a different perspective than um, um, what you saw in DMZ. It was a different perspective than what you saw in Red Dawn. It was different perspective than the multiple perspectives in Don't Look Up. Um, I think Full Metal Jacket kind of was close to it, um, but it stayed more to the journalist perspective. And that's it. So this is Jeff Carroll out. 
Sci-Fi Express Lane. Remember, like, share, subscribe, and comment. Deuces.